Good afternoon. Today we're going to be talking about three things. Personal health and well-being, how IBM is helping redefine new possibilities, and the next steps on getting started on the health transformation. In the 1800s, the average age, average life expectancy was less than 40 years. 200 years later, it's less than 80 in the U.S. And that had to do with a convergence of a series of factors. For example, living conditions, working conditions, housing, along with the advent of antibiotics and uh, vaccines. We're finding ourselves, and that led to a, a, a giant leap forward, and we're finding ourselves in a similar position today. But this time, it has to do with a different type of convergence, a type of convergence around data, technology, and expertise, resulting in a huge leap forward, allowing us to meet the individual needs of us along with the business models to support them. Furthermore, the U.S. is evolving, evolving from a fee-based fee system to a value-based system. Furthermore, there's a series of extremely interesting factors created for a very disruptive environment. For example, the challenges in the digitization of health information, the regulatory complexity, gaps in specialized skills, for example, data scientists, along with the status of the, work, of the, the global health workforce. For example, in the U.S., by 2020, 50% of all RNs, registered nurses, are going to be of the retirement age. Or... Globally, we're going to be short almost 12 million health workers by, within 20 years. Also, we realize that in the U.S., again, that the third leading cause of, meta, of deaths in the U.S. has to do with preventable medical errors. And there's lots of different obstacles societally and clinically. For example, getting the right information to the right person at the right time to drive the right outcome. Like Naomi here. But it's not just societal and clinical, it's economic as well. For example, in this $7 trillion industry, 30% of every single euro, dollar, and yen, just to name a few, is wasted. And then specifically in the US, which is a third of the global spend, there is unbelievable issues in terms of health costs are rising 8% year on year. When the economy is only rising 2 to 3%, while quality is not improving, that is a recipe for disaster. But the good news is we can close that gap. We have the ability to go where we are today, where we want to be. And the story begins with us. We know that individual health has a bunch of different factors. For example, how we live, our environment, our access to health care, our nutrition. And then also there's lots of different wearables today and medical devices that can, that can track lots of different kinds of data. For example, we realize that about that, that data is over 50% of the data around our personal and medical history over the course of our lives. And over the course of our lives, we will create over 300 million books of data. That's almost one petabyte of data. Our genes, 30%. Our medical history, 10%. If our doctors only have access to 10% of our medical history, they're not getting the full picture. Data alone is insufficient. Analytics has become the universal translator for, to derive useful information and help make informed decisions. But in order to get, achieve optimal outcomes at the point of decision, when a doctor is delivering a diagnosis or when a nurse is delivering a care plan, we need to go a step further. We need to turn that information into knowledge. And through the use of cognitive systems, we can do that. We can unlock the full potential of the data we're collecting today. Cognitive systems is a new way of thinking about computing. For the past 50 years, we've been using programmatic computing, which is based on rules and logic, if this, then that, against neatly defined data of rows and columns. Cognitive computing allows us to navigate the complexities of natural language 
and understand the way how we're interacting right now. Furthermore, it can read and understand vast and disparate amounts of data at scale. Newspapers, medical journals, electronic medical records, and many more. Furthermore, and finally, it can learn and get smarter with every new piece of information, which is a stark contrast to the traditional programmatic computing technologies you've gotten used to to date. Cognitive computing is not about artificial intelligence. It's about augmented intelligence. It's about having a personalized coach or a concierge or a trusted advisor. For example, at Memorial Sloan Kettering, we had oncologists train Watson with over 15 million documents, 300 textbooks, and over 20 years of patient history, resulting in a very powerful system that is helping doctors provide evidence-based treatment options. We're also redefining discovery at Baylor University School of Medicine in Texas in a retrospective study Watson helped find in weeks what took years for researchers. Also, Watson can be used in a bunch of other areas as well. For example, drug discovery. One in 100 drugs ever make it to market, and it takes about 10 years or so. Also, it costs billions of dollars to get through regulatory approval. Furthermore, doctors and researchers have to sift through enormous amounts of unstructured data. Annually, you have 1.8 million scientific journals, and then over 190,000 clinical trials ongoing. It's an unbelievably overwhelming. But with Watson, imagine if a researcher could efficiently find data patterns and effectively test hundreds of, hundreds of hypotheses in a fraction of the time it takes today. The mission of Watson Health is to share knowledge, whether it's a physician in Thailand, a researcher in Texas, or a caregiver in the UK. We all stand to benefit from this new era of computing. So how are we going to do this? We're going to do this in three main ways. First, we're going to take public and private data and research and make it available in the cloud. Secondly, we're going to layer analytics and cognitive computing to provide better insights. Third, we're enabling and delivering the very solutions from individuals and organizations that are going to allow us to fulfill and live to our full potential. But data and technology alone is not the answer. Watson Health at its core is an ability to orient the system around us, to, provide, to, to allow providers to know who we are and give us evidence-based options and provide a level of transparency to achieve healthier and even life-saving services. And it's not just a systems perspective, but again, it's about engagement. How can we work with the incredibly complex network of providers, payers, educators, governments, doctors, pharmacists, and many more to affect and impact Naomi's day-to-day -day life? Furthermore, we have to rethink the solutions around, the solutions required and we're doing that through providing new possibilities within if it's going to be population health, population health care management, or social programs. Furthermore, we recognize the utter importance through innovation and impact through building open ecosystems. And that's why we're creating open standards on the Watson Health Cloud, and then we're also going to provide the latest analytics and cognitive capabilities for entrepreneurs and organizations to build on top of that. And this is the same thing that we've done to date with thousands of other organizations currently building on Watson today. Furthermore, underscoring each one of these capabilities is a robust and growing set of technologies, and they hold the promise for a better life for everyone. Through technology and subject matter expertise, we can redefine how to address the unique needs of individuals, and then also provide it in a very transparent and powerful way. We've been very fortunate to have an amazing set of collaborators, and we've been able to power that through the data and technology that we bring to the table. If it's either a small medical clinic to a major medical center, for example, Memorial Sloan Kettering, MD Anderson, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, we've been able to help redefine how you approach clinical trials, help educate doctors faster, and then provide very powerful evidence-based treatment options to doctors. Also, it's not just about within, but also in terms of 
rediscovery and finding new medicine, helping researchers do in weeks what used to take a lifetime. And this kind of ambition takes an enormous amount of infrastructure and investment. And IBM is paying it forward. Organically, we invest $6 billion year on year into R&D. And then in the areas where we see gaps, we're aggressively seeking to fill them through the purchase of Fitel, Explorus, Merge, and Curum. We recognize that this is a very tough problem to solve. But that's also why we think this is our moonshot and something we're going to be working on over the next 10 years. And through this development, we've been able to build one of the fastest and largest bodies of data through these different acquisitions. 90 million lives and 315 billion data points. In closing, I want to end on a story that was told by Dr. Lucas Wartman on the stage of the World of Watson event in Brooklyn, New York in 2015. He, was a leukemia, he is a leukemia specialist, and about six years ago, he was diagnosed with the very disease that he's been trying to treat. And through the heroic effort of friends, family, technology, and data, and then also through precision medicine with genomics data, he was able to recover. With Watson, we can do the same thing, but at scale, to millions of people across the world, when every single minute counts. We are incredibly encouraged and validated by the world-renowned physicians that have supported us in this shared mission. And then finally, thank you so much for your time, and please join us in transforming healthcare. Thank you very much.